Welcome to the Theta Oil Field Services Rod Pumping Optimization video podcast. This is John Zvinos. I'm here with Fred Morrow uh, with John Crane Production Solutions. Good the morning, new, John. Good morning, Fred. And, the, and you guys are the new owner of Fiber Rod. John Crane purchased Fiber Rod. Actually, you used to be with Fiber Rod. I was with Fiber Rod and previous to that, Fiber Flex. And we've seen the product evolve over the years. The fiberglass rod goes back to the late 70s. And through the years, uh, product improvements have, have happened. And uh, we've learned more about the composite uh, properties of a rod in a dynamic application, such as an oil well and it's uh, pumping problems. This involves both peak stress and minimum stresses. Uh, one of the concerns that people should always have when running a composite string or a fiberglass string in a well is minimum stresses. Uh, you do not want a string going into compression due to uh, pumping speeds or pumping conditions such as downhole friction in, yes. the, in the pump. Now. I wanted to, to mention that the reason why we're having uh, this podcast is to explain why there was a change in the fiber rod stress range diagram, which we are implementing today in our software. Um, Fred, you want to give us a rundown on the new stress range diagram and why it was changed? Well, the new diagram reflects uh, some product improvements that were made and also uh, some work done by end users in the field. Uh, there have been some very specialized applications where they've uh, gone to rather deep depths, uh, deeper than 10,000 feet, approaching 12 or 13,000 feet, and production rates as far as fluids go are very low. Uh, this is typically dewatering uh, very deep gas wells. Uh, this results in a rod string that's doing very little work. Uh, you may be only moving 10 or 15 barrels of fluid a day from depths of 12,000 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, this is more of, uh, of a static application almost of the product rather than a dynamic application. These wells are characterized by very small pumps uh, inch and a sixteenth, maybe inch and a quarters, uh, very slow speeds, five or six strokes a minute with relatively short surface strokes, uh, 100 or 120 inches. Uh, gives a very unique application. Typically the downhole card uh, is a rectangle, but it has a very short downhole stroke compared to the surface stroke. Uh, John, in your program, the end users will see a warning pop up that says the, uh, the downhole stroke is much shorter compared to the surface stroke, and would you like to change the, uh, the design? And the answer is no, they, they're not, because uh, being a very sp uh, specific application, Fluid production is not the main concern. It's the gas production that's coming up the annular space. Mm -hmm. I, okay, yeah, that, that's good. I mean, that's interesting. Th the thing that I wanted to, to discuss next is w what did the old FiberCom diagram look like? Well, the fire, fiber, well, all of the old stress range diagrams going back to previous manufacturers look very similar to the API Goodman diagram. The only exception on the left-hand side of the peak stress line mm -hmm. uh, tended to bend downward. This was done... As we see here, yeah. on, the, on the old Fibercom diagram here. On the old fi Fibercom diagram, uh, this was done to, to force the end user to be sure that he had adequate minimum stress. The wide part of the diagram uh, said that you had a minimum stress of around 5,000 PSI. Uh, a lot of folks worked in this part of the diagram. I would imagine something in the neighborhood of 90% of our applications 
have peak stresses between 20 and 25,000 and minimum stresses between 2,500 and 5,000 psi. Uh, you actually use a very, very small part of the load range diagram that's published. Mm -hmm. So, so this was the old Fibercom stress range diagram. This was the old diagram, and if you called Fibercom and asked them to do a design, they actually discourage anybody from running any part of the diagram that was above 27,500 psi. So they published a diagram, but basically cut off the top part of it. Okay. Now, this led to the the uh, diagram that was put up by Fiber Rod. Okay, now th th that bring up, okay, and this is the old Fiber Rod diagram right here. But the question that I have is, what's the difference between Fiber Rod and Fiber Com? Fibercom uh, was the company, Fiber Rod was the product. Okay. Uh, so, so now what we call the Fiber Rod diagram is really the second diagram for the same kinds of rods. It was the, the, the evolution, the second evolution of the diagram that again reflected some product changes but it was intended to allow the customer to use the entire diagram. Uh, the top part of it was not cut off, but there still was the warning that said if you exceed 27,500 PSI to, to contact us. Uh, this was done to prevent some designs getting out that had very little chance of working. Keep in mind, this is a composite. The loads and useful life are controlled by the steel end fittings, the fiberglass rod body, and the adhesive that bonds uh, to the rod body but not to the steel end fitting. There can be three separate modes of failure in the end fitting, in the adhesive, or in the rod body. The minimum stress that we're always concerned about is not a reflection really on the rod body, but more of a reflection on the, the uh, device that anchors the rod to the end fitting, the wedge system. When you get low minimum loads and have the rod go into compression, the first thing to fail is the adhesive wedge systems. Why, why would it fail in compression? It doesn't fail, but because it doesn't squeeze the rod. Well, what happens is that you set, release, set, release the wedge system, and it actually fatigues out the adhesive in the end fitting, not the rod body. I see. Peak stresses, on the other hand, will cause the wedge system to actually crush the rod body. So the adhesive stays together, but you break fibers in the rod. So we're concerned about high stresses and mm -hmm. its effects we're concerned about low stresses and its effects on the adhesive. I see. Okay, so this, this diagram, do you remember when this came out? This, uh, the fiber rod diagram came out in late 2003. Okay, now we put it in our software and uh, we didn't realize that some other competing programs had the old old diagram, the previous to this one, and there were some differences between our software and the competition, mm -hmm. and that's when we became aware that you were working on another diagram, which um, we need to talk about. But first, um, tell me why there was a need to develop a new diagram. Well, some of the, the end users using the very first uh, diagram and actually sometimes picking a supplier FiberFlex in confusion with fiber rod or fiber com, we saw designs that had someone else's product in there but they were buying our rods and that had a totally different diagram altogether. In the past there's probably been six or seven different rod manufacturers and they each had their own diagram. Uh, at this point, uh, 
we went back and we said, okay, it's time to come up with a diagram that reflects current applications and current product. Some of our, our, our customers, uh, as I said before, were experimenting with some applications that were very deep, making very little production as far as liquids go, and trying to dewater gas wells. They actually put some rods in some wells that we would have questioned, but because